sorry about that. I had to make a quick, I don't want to call it an emergency trip, but um, I'm back in California in my, actually my old condo where I used to live, right off 36th Street, right next to the ocean. So uh, anyway, it's good to be back and it's good to be uh, with you guys. I have a really fun t uh, subject to cover today, but before I do that, I want to give a couple shout outs to uh, my notification squad. Say, let me know you guys are out there. Let me know where people are coming from. Now today's going to be a little different um, because for me, just technically, so give me a minute to kind of get a lay of the land of what's going on. Um, I have, uh, you know, several different things I'm looking at. So I'm looking at a screen here, a screen here, da da da, da and then I'm going to have some uh, of my notes pop up. So anyway, with that said, just let me know where you guys are coming from, where everybody is today. I'm trying to uh, multi-stream from my old laptop instead of my, my studio, as you guys can probably tell. And um, I want to go ahead and cover today's subject now. Okay, we've got Olivia, got human robot. Hi, Ken, simply the best. Some of our good old guys. Uh, hello from Denmark. Hi, guys. How are you? Uh, let's see if we've got anybody from Facebook. Anybody for Facebook on there? Let's take a look. Uh, and then I'm going to grab some of my old notes. We've got vo Vocality from Scotland. Hey, Vocality, how you doing, man? And let me go here to some of my notes. Um, we've got Marjorie from McNamara from New Brunswick. Hi, Marjorie. Good to see you. Joey from Tennessee. How you doing, Joey? Boy, you're you're. You're a uh, governor, man, looking like raising taxes 33% for Tennessee, for, for Nashville again. You guys are already so expensive, no one can afford to live there. It used to be a reasonable place to live. We've got Brazil on board. We've got Denmark again. Uh, would you mind doing a reaction video on? Well, save your questions for that. Um, and yeah, I'll try to get to that towards the end here. Um, and since we're running kind of behind already, if you guys don't mind, I just want to go ahead and dive right in because we've got some really cool stuff to cover. So the, the today's thing is these trips that saved my ass, my arse, my arse as they say in Great Britain. Um, and there's going to be some fun and some humorous ones, but there's going to be some real legit ones that I know that will really sincerely help you guys too. So I'm doing this all on my own life's experiences, as you know. So um, even though some of my experiences may be more from a touring background, like long-term touring, um, it still applies. So it's from the micro to the macro. Maybe it's at the macro level, but it still applies to it still applies to the micro. So I'll discuss that as we go, but you'll see why in a minute. So I am just going to dive right in. Number one, number one uh, is not over singing during sound check. Try only to sing once per day, like warming up an hour before you're going to go out and perform and try not to talk a lot during the day. Now, let me break this down for you. So, well, what do you mean? What's sound check? Well, you know, sound check is when you go in and sometimes they'll have sound check a lot earlier during the day. So you want to, you know, make sure your mic's working, make sure the band's equipment's working or whatever. And what a lot of people will do is they'll do a warm up and they'll do it before sound check. And then sometimes they'll want to show off or whatever, you know, do whatever they want to do during a sound check. Save all that. Save all of your energy and all that for the actual show. Now, if you're doing a longer sound check and you're sound checking more than a song or two, which is unlikely, um, you know, you're going to want to be a little warmed up for your sound check so you don't blow your voice out. I get that. Absolutely. A little warmed up, but not crazy. Just enough just to hear the mic, make sure you can hear everybody's instruments and stuff. Don't use sound check as a, a pre-performance time. That's really important because, again, you're you're trying to pace yourself and save yourself for that. So that's that's a big deal. Um, now, try again. Like I said, a lot of people think, well, I try to get up and the first thing in the morning, I'm concerned. I want to know I have voice for my show that day. It could be daytime, nighttime, even a morning show. Um, and so, so what people do is they'll start doing exercises first thing in the morning. Don't do that. Just do some gentle lip drills. Gentle let little air lip drills throughout the day just to kind of keep your voice loose and in in, in in good you know good elasticity and the reason for that is because um if you've spent it in the morning it's like oh you go and you work out in the morning well don't expect to go perform in a game that night you've already spent your 24 hour you know energy so to speak wait 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 till game time so do some simple gentle lip drills throughout the day um and then you know and then warm up a little bit before a sound check and then really warm up before your actual performance. That's really important. Now, a lot of people too, they get excited and you know, they, or they have interviews or other things. Now for me, uh, it, it, it got kind of crazy because there was a time where, you know, we would do, let's say a morning radio show drive, morning TV, a radio show, uh, which I had to warm up for. 
And then we'd go do an album signing thing at you know 12 or 1 o'clock to invite people and whatever, and sometimes even an acoustic performance there. So then you've got that scheduled, and then you've got your sound check, and then you've got your performance. So you really, really have to be careful and judicious on how much you spend for each one of these because no one's Hercules. I mean, as much as I like to think I am and I have a lot of voice to last long periods of time, I still am saving it for my ultimate performance that evening, so I'm very careful. The next thing is don't eat just before shows. Now, I know some of this is overlapping and we've discussed it, but this is going to be very specific to what saved me. So it's not just good tips on X. It's what saved my BCNO, as they say in Greek, or Mears, as they say in Great Britain. So um, now the reason for that is you could have all kinds of things, but not the least of which is gas and regurgitation. And as tacky as that might sound, um, if you get a lot of gas, then all of a sudden you get reflux and you start burping up stuff when you sing. Not fun. Now, this applies to um, carbonated beverages as well. I don't care what kind of carbonated beverages. Just don't do it. Just try not to do it even that day. No carbonated beverages. Eat at least an hour or before a show, but do eat. Don't say, oh, I'm so nervous. My stomach's in knots. I just can't eat. No, do eat. Don't live on adrenaline because the adrenaline itself can cause your muscles to close down and you to be all real tensed up and you know go into a fight, fight or flight uh, state. We don't want that either. So eat before a show, not a lot, and not heavy foods. And I do have a, a, thing, you know, a diet for singers. So if you want to know what kinds of things you can eat just before a show or an hour and, pre, an hour and previous before a show, uh, look at some of those things in my diet for singers because that's important. But eat, just eat some good stuff. No fatty, big fatty, help meats. Try not to do any dairy at all, uh, you know, even for a couple, three days before a show, but especially show day because it mounts mu mucus. Um, that's true for sugars. A lot of sugar will do that too. It'll give you a lot of mucus. So uh, believe it or not, as simple as this sounds, take a nice, long, hot shower um, before an event. So especially before you warm up. So let's say, let's say your performance is at six, you know, take a, a real hot, long shower at four o'clock, 4.30. Uh, then do your warm-ups, get yourself warmed up, and then boom, go ahead and, and dive right in, and you'll see that your voice is uh, uh, you know, nice and warmed up. Now, if you feel like you have inflammation, and I've said this before, and I don't recommend making a habit of this, because I, lo I love curcumin, which is um, you know, turmeric and, and black pepper, etc., to bring down inflammation health healthfully, in a healthy kind of way. If you have to take two ibuprofen or even three ibuprofen before a show, if you don't play a lot of shows and you're not relying on this every day, it's okay to do that. Just be careful. Make sure you have something on your stomach because it really eats away at the lining of the walls of your stomach and messes with your stomach acid and can really cause some funk in the gut. Um, so, so yeah, um, ibuprofen is is really helpful on show days, as, as is having a humidifier, especially a deep humidifier like one connected to your face and so forth. Now, another thing, that's three. Number four, the fourth thing, we're going to do 15 of these and I'm going to add some goodies too. But um, number four uh, has really, really, really saved my butt. When we travel, our immune system gets broken down. And I've covered this in my nutritional parts of my, of you know the dietary stuff that I've covered in the past. But if you only had a quick go-to of I'm starting to feel a little fluey, or I'm starting to feel like a little bit of a cold coming on. Oh no, get zinc lozenges. I like nature's way, but there's a lot of good ones out there. Some zinc lozenges, you can take one every couple hours. It's okay to do that. In fact, it's ironic, like I said, that with this COVID-19 thing, that everyone's zinc, 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 you know, and, and zithromycin or uh, z pack you know, and, 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 and high doses of vitamin C. So I recommend strongly zinc lozenges, zinc lozenges, a, a concentrated form of vitamin C. They make these great little packets of vitamin C. I'm not talking about the cheap crap, which is like airborne you get at the airport, or I'm talking about the expensive ones. So liposomal, liposomal, or liposphericic vitamin C. It's very concentrated. They're kind of costly. They're like a buck or even two a pack, you know, but what would you pay for the cost of your health? Danielle Ladon's grapeseed extract spray. I'll try to remember to put some of these in the description so you know, but it's called Danielle and then an L. Ladon, so Danielle Ladon grapeseed extract. It's a spray, and it's it's uh, it's an antiviral fungal fighter. So it's good for virus and fungus. And you'll know if you're coming down with something because if you're not, you can hardly taste it when you do it down your throat or under your tongue, actually. But when you're starting to get, have a um, a bacterial infection or a virus come on, 
it will be really bitter. And you'll go, oh my gosh, I'm so glad I did that. If you do it the second, don't wait too on this stuff. By the way, hit it quick and hard. Even if you suspect you're feeling kind of funky, or if you know that you've been around other people that have been sick, just go ahead and do it. It's healthy. It's good for you. Now, now again, don't do this every day for the rest of your life. Thinking, okay, I'm just going to do this because, you know, grapeseed extract is is also um, fights free radicals in the body. And as much as we see, you know, get rid of the free radicals. No, you don't want to get all rid of your free. That's like saying get rid of all the bacteria in your body. It just helps the body stave off infection. Okay. Another excellent, excellent one is colloidal silver. Now, it's gotten such a bad rap, you know, the blue, the guy that turned blue from taking too much. Guys, it's great stuff. I've been taking it forever. I haven't turned blue yet, <laughs> you know. Um, and, and, and if you do it, and it's for flu only, it's not for colds, it's for flu. I like a, at least 1,100 parts or 1,000 parts per million. You take a little dropper, a full dropper full, a little bit of water, chug it, and you're just going to go, oh my gosh, I never got it. I felt the flu coming on. And we all know what that feels like, right? That flu feeling. I felt the flu coming on and then all of a sudden it was gone, like within hours, okay? Um, the next thing is um, raw garlic, raw garlic. Chop a little bit of raw garlic on some toast with some butter and no one's going to want to be around you. That's fine. I get it. But, um, and careful because it can cause gas. So you don't want to like to overdo it, but just one clove of garlic on some raw toast, do that like every two or three hours for, you know, three or four doses, kind of like you would do an antibiotic. It's nature's antibiotic. So imagine that you went to the doctor, doctor says, okay, I want you to take one of these three times a day or four times a day. You break it out into three hour increments. Of That's the same thing with garlic and it works amazing. B propolis is also awesome. Concentrated forms of B propolis, not the little throat sprays. Those are good too and they can help, but there's nothing like a really great concentrated um, organic B propolis. So, and then stay hydrated, guys. I mean, you know, really just drink a lot of good healthy filtered water and that's awesome. So that's number four. Those, I can't tell you how much that has saved my butt over the years, guys. And I know some of you out there know too that I've, I've, I've prided myself and I have lost so few shows in my entire life. I mean, I want to, I want to say maybe three or four, maybe, probably only three, I think, in my entire life where I was not able to sing through my performances and do a pretty decent job um, directly due to cold or flu. So understand, yeah, even with pneumonia, I've sung through uh, you know that. In fact, I have you know videos on YouTube where I, I booked studio time and prepaid for it and went, well, I, you know, might as well at least try it because I've already paid for the studio time. You know, and I've, I, so it's the proof is in the singing, but the proof is also in taking care of yourself. Number five, warm up your voice no matter what, even if it's tired. Let me say it again. If you're doing this correctly, by the way, this is contingent on if you understand how to warm up your voice and you're doing it correctly, warm up your voice no matter what, even if it's tired. Because what you're doing is you're, you're, the chords themselves want to harden and get thick and, and get tired and whatnot. But it's just like stretching exercises. Ugh, I'm going to stretch no matter what. I'm going to get my muscles going. Oh, okay, I'm getting this going here. And once you do this, you're going to see your voice come right back online. Even if it sounds tired or it sounds kind of crusty from singing heavy the night before or, or you, you know whatever it is, you talk a lot at your job, I don't care. Warm it up in a nice bright timbral sound and you're going to see how beneficial this is. But no matter what, warm up before shows, no matter what. Absolutely. So that's absolutely saved me arse. Uh, another thing, a funny thing, you're not going to relate to this, but I'm going to share it with you anyway. Um, Aramis cologne has saved me arse, okay? And what does that mean? Aramis, what? Um, we were coming back, this is one of my funny stories. We were coming back from a, a tour in Europe and I, I can't remember if it's Hurricane Hugo or Christina because I was in both of them in an airplane situation. And I want to say it was Hugo. So kind of look me up on this. It's like 89 or something. And we were coming back from Europe. And the first thing that happened was we were in London Heathrow and we had this giant, you know, delay. And everyone's frustrated, long tour. Oh, no, we just got to London Heathrow, and now we've got this giant six-hour delay waiting for a plane. Well, we just didn't know that there was a hurricane brewing, uh, you know, in the North Pacific, uh, and, and it was heading down towards Nova Scotia above New York, uh, you know, um, the state of New York in, in the Americas. 
And so um, it was one of the reasons that our, our flight was delayed. So I'm cruising around duty free and I'm going, yeah, what can I get? What can I get? You know, ah, I could use some cologne. So I grabbed some Aramis cologne. I had a leather jacket on, on stuff it. Oh, they, at the time they don't stuff it in your pocket. They make you pay for it. And then they give it to you at the gate. You know, when you board the airplane, so I board the airplane, stuff it in my pocket. I go to my seat. Well, we're about four or five hours into the flight and the captain gets on and says, uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, we have a pretty good sized storm brewing uh, over the East Coast. And uh, it's the, we're hitting headwinds, some pretty severe headwinds right now. Uh, we may end up landing either in Greenland or Iceland to refuel, to continue to see if we can make it to, uh, to America, to the East Coast. And that was not a comforting thought. Um, but nonetheless, we just kind of kept cruising. The, then the captain said, okay, the, the storm is stalled just north of, or you know, above Nova Scotia. And so it looks like we're going to be able to make it. So then he gets back on a couple hours later. Remember, this is about a six-hour flight from London to New York. So, you know, about two and a half hours, three hours out, he says, yeah, it's picked back up and it's heading straight for, you know, the airport we were going to land in, which was LaGuardia in New York. And he goes, um, you know, it looks like we may have to divert this, this, this bird um, all the way to Texas, which was their hub city. And I don't, I don't remember, if it, was, it was Continental, actually, Airlines. And... Um, so uh, we went a little farther, and so now we're about an hour and a half out, and he says, these headwinds are so severe, we don't have even remotely enough fuel to make it to Nova Scotia. We're going to have to land in LaGuardia. So we get to LaGuardia, and we're about 40,000 feet in the air, 35,000, 40,000 40, feet in the air. And we're circling the airport at this altitude because the storm had come and is starting to pass, and we're, and we're circling the airport for 45 minutes. And finally, the captain gets on and he says, ladies and gentlemen, we are out of fuel. I have to land this plane. And you're like, right? So we're starting to go down and, you know, it's getting a little bumpy and it's going to doing a couple of these and then a couple of these and a couple of these, you know. In fact, it got so gnarly at one point that all of the luggage compartments had opened and luggage started falling out, but that's not the part I want to get to because what saved my butt, right, is um, this stewardess, or flight attendant, they're called now, sorry, sorry stewardesses out there, uh, was helping a woman with her baby. Now, we're in a 747, so those of you guys that know what a 747 is, there's you know a couple, three seats on the right side, a couple, three seats on the uh, left side, and there's like four seats or five seats, whatever it is, I forget, in the middle. And there was this woman in the middle about four rows back from the, from the bulkhead, and she had a baby. And she was having a hard time holding on to her baby while this plane is just doing these crazy things. Now, I'm sitting on the wing at this point. That's where my seat was, over the wing. And I'm watching the wing of a 747 go bend so far out down that I can't even see the wing, the tip of the wing. And then bend so far up that I'm convinced it's just going to snap off. And at this point now, it's like a massive roller coaster. I mean, it is like, whoa, you're like, all right, is this where I start making notes to loved ones and telling them, you know, I hope everything's going to be okay and hopefully I had everything in order. I mean, I'm not kidding. It was, it, that's, that's how this whole thing was going down. Anyway, so this stewardess tries to help this woman. And so she's kind of, you know, making her way to help this lady. And we hit another air pocket and bam, she goes flying over the woman onto a bunch of people behind her. So she was like four, four rows before, and then she hits, we hit this pop pocket, and then this plane goes down, and she goes flying over this woman and that. Finally, people, the passengers that were seatbelted, had to hold her down as she's crawling down this aisleway to get back to her seat. Still wasn't able to help the woman. Somehow there were other people around this woman that were helping her keep her baby down. That's not what saved me. <laughs> well, Jesus Christ saved me first. It was definitely, definitely a lot of prayer on that one. But then it happened. <gasps> you hear way in the back. <laughs> and you just started hearing people throwing up. And this started way in the back. And I'm about midway over the, over the wings, right? The stench was so horrific I can't even describe it to you. Most people I'm convinced that throw up on planes, you know, after someone else has thrown up, they're not thrown up because they're necessarily seasick or, you know, motion sick. They're thrown up because the stench. 
that got so bad, so many people threw up, it was on the luggage racks, it was on the walls, it was on the backs of seats, there were no more barf bags, it was everywhere. But I had me Aramis. <laughs> and I felt, started getting queasy myself. I took the Aramis cap off, I sprayed the inside of my leather jacket, put it over my head, and just breathed Aramis all the way. We eventually did land the plane. It was horrific. They ground the plane for a stress test. Apparently, a, a wing did almost crack off, if you can believe that. Um, and they we had, had a big delay and got on another flight. Aramis saved me arse. <laughs> Ken, that doesn't help me much for my... Yeah, I know, but it's a good story, and you guys probably had a good time listening to it. Hopefully. Maybe not. Anyway, all right. That was that was 5B, by the way. That wasn't just 5. Um, sleep. Sleep. Even cat naps help. Just, I know sometimes we get nervous and crazy, but guys, don't be taking Unisom or drugs or whatever it is to try to get you sleep because you're nervous and get out. Because that's how we get into really bad habits. Create some good habits. And, and even if you don't get enough sleep, just know that you have trained your body to a point that it's so strong that, and your voice that even if you don't get the sleep you were hoping for, you can still pull it off, okay? Absolutely still pull it off. So know that in the back of your mind. I'm going to get to the psychology of this in a minute. Um, and even little cat naps, just laying down, just chilling. Now, I have some relaxation tapes, you know, that just say, hey, you know, relax your arms, or this, that, whatever, put on some music, whatever, put something over my eyes to cover the light because light actually keeps you awake, as you know, um, tells the body that it's, you know, daytime. So even doing 20 minutes of that, 30 minutes of that, even if you do it a couple times, helps tremendously. So sleep and relaxation is, is absolutely tremendous. Um, now, I talked about no carbonated beverages and no dairy. That was seven. I actually included it in the previous one, but I have some, some good other pointers coming up. Set pacing. What is set pacing? Pace your set. Now, if you're only doing a song, let's say you're doing it for your church, you're doing karaoke, you know, you're busking, whatever that is. We either pace the songs in a set, meaning 10 songs back to back, where we start out with a fairly easy song, and then we move to another kind of not so easy, but easier. We get a lay of the land, you know, see if we can hear everything, blah, blah, blah. And then little by little, we go to a little more difficult songs, then we back it up to give ourselves a little break, and then we go to and finish. Usually, if we're doing this correctly, not, not normal people. Normal people, I want to get rid of my hardest songs first, get those out of the way, and then get to the easy stuff. No, if we're good singers, we're actually using the performance time to continue to warm our voices up so that comes song five, six, seven, we're really in the zone and really starting to get warmed up. And that's it. So we want to pace the set. Now, if it's only one song, you want to pace the song. You don't come out and kill it. And a lot of people, and it's funny, I've seen this and I've talked about this before, so I won't make a big deal of this now, where, you know, they'll come out and they want to wow the audience, so they're just going to kill them. Ah! And they walk out and they do their thing. And there's lots of ways to warm up an audience without having to go out and blow your voice out and give it all you got 30 seconds out. Have, have some maturity in this. You know, have some uh, ability to have some restraint to go, okay, I've got you know, an hour's worth of material or 70 minutes or whatever this thing is where you don't have to walk out. And that's true for even a single song. Don't walk out and kill yourself. Get yourself warmed up even into the song, into the first chorus, and then, you know, on and the second chorus, and then finish well, because that's where everybody, you know, really wants to see, uh, you know, they want to walk away remembering it. And if they walk away remembering, you know, something lame, they won't want to come back. Now, some things that I've done, too, um, that have really, really helped me and saved me ours is um, I've done a lot of exercise, especially cardio stuff. You know, I used to run, you know, do a lot of running in soft sand and other things. But also, believe it or not, like doing jumping jacks while I'm doing my... Ah, Right, and I'll, or ride a bike, or do Nordic track, you know, the cross-country um, skiing track thing. You know, I'll do things that are cardio-related because, face it, when we're out on a stage and adrenaline's pumping and the heart's beating real hard, um, you need to be physically fit and have con and be in condition to do that. So, excuse me. <coughs> it's good. Um, so that was number eight. Number nine: um, make vocal sound checks too loud and fake out the sound man. Saved me ours many, many, many a time. It's my go-to for not singing super loud into the mic, 
so that the sound man sets and adjusts my in, my levels of the mic. Now, don't get too crazy because if it's too light, you'll distort you know the preamp on the mixing console. I'm not saying that, but enough threshold to give yourself three, four, five dB of extra play so that when the guitar player goes over and sneaks over and turns his amp up a little bit, or the drummer sound checks kind of light, and then when he actually really starts hitting the drums, or whatever that looks like for everybody on stage, or even just a solo performance as you're you know, doing a, a singing to tracks or something. When people get in a room, when there's a lot of people in the room, when you sound check to an empty arena, when bodies come in, it sucks up around 30 or 40% of the sound in the room. No joke, really does. It's like dampening a wall, okay? So what we really want to do is we want to get enough uh, threshold in that microphone so that if other events happen and we need more volume to be able to hear ourselves, that is how we do it. We trick the sound man. So that would be uh, uh, definitely number nine for me, and it's worked like a charm. Uh, by the way, speaking of uh, things not to do on stage, uh, this is 9B. Uh, I may have, I think I've shared this before, but I was at a, a really big festival in Europe, and uh, we had just, we were late coming to Soundcheck. So we'd already had our sound check that we're only supposed to get 20 minutes because it was a festival because they, you know, they move bands in and out really quick. We had already lost five minutes off the off the our, our time because we were late. And so I was on the bus and I hadn't put my shoes on. I was barefoot. And I just remember grabbing my guitar, grabbing my headset wireless, running out to the stage. Everybody's sound check, so I'm barefoot. And I had no idea how dangerous that was. And as we're sound checking, I had an arc hit me off the microphone. People say they saw it jump about six inches onto my lips. It knocked me out and to the ground. I apparently kind of was convulsing. The next thing I knew, I, my head was going zzz, 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 really crazy loud sound. And I look up and I see the, you know, the stage sound man and the stage manager and bandmates and stuff looking around me. Are you okay? Are you okay? And, and, and my muscles were just literally convulsing. And it was, I couldn't even feel my hands at first and kind of shook it off. And Always wear shoes on stage. It will save your arse. <laughs> Especially rubber shoes. You know, rub, just rubber-soled shoes. Uh, definitely a lifesaver. That was a free tip. That wasn't included in the other one. So setting a strict schedule and not throwing it out the window because there's so much distraction going on. So stay doing the things that you practiced, the things that you hopefully got yourself into a rhythm, Right? If you got into a rhythm, rhythm for eating, a rhythm for exercise, a rhythm for vocal exercise, curfews, don't go out partying with everybody after show even though it's FOMO and you want to go out and say, you know, or hot chicks for you guys out there, whatever that thing is, you know, put your, put, be responsible. If you really love this and you want to do this and you want to be better at it and you want it to be sustainable, then you're going to do these things. Put yourself in rhythms of this stuff, discipline yourself. And don't change your rhythm when you're on the road. And I got to tell you, that has saved my butt so many times. I cannot even describe to you that when even when the whole band gets sick, you're the only guy not sick because you were in your rhythm. You did all the things you were supposed to do. And as a singer, you know, guitar player gets a blister. Bummer, he gets sick. It's kind of miserable, but he still plays the show. A singer gets sick. And it's a lot more difficult to make it through the show. Not only are you fronting the band and all the energy is directed to you and you're supposed to redistribute this energy, um, but also vocally just from a physical standpoint and, and, and the voice being biologic or not biologic, uh, yeah, um, biology, whatever that word is, I'll think of it in a minute. But anyways, but being, you know, just human, <laughs> all right, uh, you've got to be able to, uh, to uh, you know, protect that and that's very, very important. So again, I don't care if it's eating, exercise, vocal exercises, do those for sure. Curfews, sitting at 11, I got to be in by 11, got to be in by 12, whatever that is. Make it and don't break it because if you do that and put yourself in a rhythm, then, and what, by the way, most of you guys out there that play a lot of shows, you know exactly what I'm talking about. You get out of a rhythm, you get excited, you get distracted, and then you start just reacting to everything. Well, this guy needs an interview. Well, this guy wants to talk to you. There's a radio guy over here. The label says you're supposed to do this. We didn't make our sound, you know, signing our autographs. And, and by the way, that might be bigger than life stuff for some of you out there listening. Why? Well, I, I don't go on tour and I don't sign autographs. It translates through everything. It could be, you know, uh, I didn't make it on time. You know, be early to an event. Be early to sound check. Like get, get, really just discipline yourself and be responsible with this stuff and you'll know what I'm talking about. So, um, all right, so let's uh, move on here. So that was 
Number 12, always be ready. Always, always be ready on the drop, you know, the turn of a dime or you drop of a hat or whatever to be ready to perform, always. You know, it's funny, I, was, I do all these vocal coach reactions to, a vocal coach reacts to this or how it makes a singer great, blah, blah, blah stuff, right? And I did one to kiss guy at a Dave Grohl concert. And why this is humorous to me is I always carried a pick, a guitar pick. You guys know, guitar's my first instrument, singing came second. Always carried a pick in my pocket, always. Didn't matter what, because my Jim Dunlop Jazz 3s, it's a smaller pick, and if I were ever called to go play somewhere, do something, I could play someone else's guitar, but I had to have my pick, okay? And so but what I found about humor, so I'm doing this vocal coach reaction to Kiss Guy, and uh, look it up, Dave Grohl, Kiss Guy, it's really, really cool. Dave's really cool, I love Dave. And um, so anyway, I'm doing a reaction to this, and apparently Kiss Guy is one of my students, and I didn't even know it because we have a lot of students. He goes, man, Ken, don't you remember me? We did a session back, blah, blah, blah. And so then I remembered him, of course. But um, anyway, and so what was funny about it was Dave goes, he gives him his guitar, and he goes, hey, man, you want, you want a pick? He goes, and he goes, oh, F you. You already got your own pick, you know, because Kiss Guy had a pick in his pocket. He had the opportunity of a lifetime to get called on by Dave Grohl to go up on stage and perform. That is how people get breaks. Now, I'm not saying it's the only way, but it is a big way on how people get breaks. So Kiss Guy got a break from Dave Grohl and he had his own pick. He was ready. Let's always be ready. Singing ready, ready. Just we are, we're called on and just in the drop of a hat or in a single moment, boom, we're ready to go. Number 13, sing through colds and flu. We've talked about this a lot. A lot of There's a lot of really funky advice, even from otolaryngologists and ENTs and, and, and speech pathologists and so forth. Oh, oh, if you get sick, make sure you wrap it with something warm. Drink warm fluids. Do this, do that, Johnny, and give yourself four or five days to recover. Me, 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 said the person that's never sung before. Said the person that's never been on tour going, oh, wow, so I should just cancel my tour or go bankrupt because I have five shows go down back to back and I can't afford to have that happen. So I should just you know give everybody their money back and put my tail between my legs and go home. No, guys. <laughs> These are people that have never done this before. We sing carefully through colds and flu. We warm up whether we're performing or not. And preferably do it while you're not so you know what it feels like to sing and, and, and warm up through colds and flu. And again, unless you've completely lost your voice and have laryngitis or have a bronchial infection so bad that you can hardly talk, that's different. That's and or strep throat. But that's an exception to the rule. But that's not most colds and flu. So when you get a cold, you get a flu. It's a bummer. Sing through it. Keep elasticity back in the cords. Help clear mucus off the cords. Help your cords keep from getting thick. All those things. It resiliency. All those things. It really, really helps. And then your recovery time is far less, and you're boom, back in the saddle. If you don't do that, sometimes it could take a couple weeks to get your voice back, which is absolute nonsense. When, 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 you, when you're, you know, if you're an athlete and, you know, you get a flu, you don't go, oh, I just can't. Oh. No, you still train, you go out, you keep your body, you know, you don't go crazy, but, you know, be responsible, but, you know, use some common sense. Anyway, 14, don't cram in things at the last minute. Plan, slow and steady wins the race, okay? I really mean this. It's so easy for people to think, ah, oh, I got three days till my performance or two days or I'll do it the night before. No, no, get your stuff together, which is gonna lead me to the next uh, number 15. So don't cram at the last minute to get stuff done. You'll forget stuff, you'll do it haphazardly and sloppy uh, you'll, uh, or you'll miss things altogether and it won't it won't help you with your best performance. So. Just be responsible, guys. These are all common sense things. So um, number 15, and I'm, I'm going to add some more stuff. So I'm not stopping at 15 because I get some fun stuff I want to. But organize your contact info in advance. You know, organize all your stuff in advance. Don't wait to the last minute. But more importantly, or as importantly, have a place where you put it all. Now, some people, I have all my contact in, info in my phone. That's cool. But a lot of times, like if you're, and for me, like you're in a foreign country and your phone isn't working because it's on a different internet service provider or service provider period, phone service provider, whatever, and you can't access it, print it. Old school. Print it. 
print it and have a, a, a sachet or some kind of briefcase, or in my case, I had something called an access bag, where in this bag, I had everything. I'm telling you, I can't tell you how many times it saved me arse, is having everything in one bag. Now, I'm going to get to what, why that's important here in a second, but that could be Literally, I had this access bag, and, and it was funny. The one time I got thrown off my game was we had a guitar player that got really sick, and it was we had this carne, and what a carne is is you check in a bunch of your equipment through customs, so it proves that you bought it in the U.S. I'm from the U.S., bought it in the U.S., you check it in to go through customs wherever you're going, they check it all off the list, and then you come back in the country, you can prove you didn't buy it overseas so they don't try to charge you tax. It's called a carne. Anyway, so, so within this... Um, I got off my game because one of our guitar players was late, and so we looked like we were going to miss a flight. So what did I do in a panic? I didn't follow my own advice. Instead of putting my, my passport, we're going to Germany, back in my access bag that I carry on with me, I panicked and I stuffed it in my luggage. Guess what? My luggage got checked. Guitar player shows up. We make the flight. We end up at customs in Germany. Passport! I'm like, passport, where is it? Where's my bag? It's not in the bag. Where's my passport? They were about to ship me back. Yeah, they were going to ship me all the way back to, to California. And then I remembered, oh my gosh, I think I left it in my luggage luggage because I had a snapshot of remembering me doing that. I talked the agent in my best German to allow me to follow me into the customs op part, which is really tough to get those guys to, to, to bend, to get a German customs officer to bend. Try that one for size. That, my friends, is negotiation. That also saved me arse. <laughs> I didn't put that one on here. And giving away a lot of free CDs, that saved me arse many a times. But anyway, is talk to me and go, sure enough, it was in my bag. I went back and they let me through and it was good but because I didn't follow my own advice. So I can't stress how important that is to store your stuff in a place where you always know where it is. And by the way, it could be every, it could be your keys, it could be your song lyrics, it could be your performance track tape, you know, CD, whatever. It could be your MP4 player if that's what you're using, whatever that is. It could be guitar picks, it could be venue and contact information, it could be money, your wallet, phones, batteries for your guitar or whatever things you use, other guitar tools like strings, you name it. Always put them back in the same place and the peace of mind that you have going, it's there. Check. Yeah, yeah, yeah check. Yeah, mm -hmm, yeah. Uh, I've got my, my throat spray, check, it's in the bag. You know, If you always know it's in one spot, you will blow your mind the, the peace that it gives you and how awesome that will save you, save your arse. All right, now i got some fun with so, some, some, some bonus tracks, let's call them. Number 16, stay focused and make your minutes count. What do I mean by that? Well, it doesn't matter the size of venue that you play. It doesn't matter if you're in a church or a school play or you're singing one performance, sitting in for somebody, karaoke, whatever this is. Stay focused because your time gets sucked away really quickly in a lot of directions from being distracted. In fact, you're constantly distracted because not only are you distracted mentally because you're nervous and you know, you're thinking about the show and whatever, but you're also kind of not on your game because there's so much stuff going on that you've got a referee that you really have to, you know, stay constantly focused on managing your time. So make a time schedule. Go, okay, no matter what, four o'clock, I'm going to do my workout. Just like what Ken said, I'm going to get in my routine. I'm not going to change my routine and throw it out because of all these distractions. So-and-so wants to talk to you. But your mom and dad are here from Paducah, Kentucky. Tell them I'll be there after the show or whatever, blah, blah, blah. But don't get yourself pulled in a bunch of directions where it take, takes you off of your game and your routine. So time easily gets away from you and you're going to look down and you realize, oh my gosh, I didn't save myself enough time for my warm-ups or changing my guitar strings or, or whatever that looks like to you, okay? Very, very important. That is saved me arse. Saved me arse. More times than I care to count. Number 17. I know I said I didn't do 15, but I kept thinking of more and I go, well, I got to share this stuff with these guys because I think it'll be helpful. Um psychologically, right? There's a lot of psychological parts to this. So the mindset, a lot of people think, oh my gosh, this is such a big, important show. It's the biggest show of my life. You will live to fight another day. You will live to sing another show. You'll get another chance. Maybe it's a big chance. And if we mess up, 
we mess up. It happens to all of us. All of us. You will live to fight another day. So psychologically prepare yourself for that. Don't freak out to the point where it's such a big deal. Go in and go, I'm as prepared as I could be. I prepared all the way up to this point and whatever I got is what I got and I'm happy with that. I'm good with that. And I'm and it's it's my best foot forward because I I I towed the line, I stayed the course, and I'm 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 ready to do this task that I set out to. 18. <laughs> my touring friends will really appreciate this one. If you don't have the luxury of taking your own sound man, which we usually did, or if your sound man decides that you know he's not gonna make it on time for a flight, which has happened many a times, um, make sure you get a good sound man or ask around at whatever venues. You know, whoever, and preferably one that's, uh, uh, believe it or not, I've seen a lot of the local sound venue guys be better than the sound men that have been brought on tours because they know their room really well. Now, I'm not saying all the time, but they know the room. But when that happens, grease the sound man. Just get out 20 bucks, 30 bucks. What are you even going to afford? I, I'll go over and I'll slide him 50 bucks, 100 bucks. Just thank them. Say, hey, dude. I know you're the most underappreciated guy in the room and you're probably the most important guy in the room and I want to sound good tonight. And and chances are he'll pay special attention to he or she will pay special attention to you. They'll make sure they write down all your settings correctly. They'll make sure that you get enough time. They'll be a lot more attentive to it. And, and preferably too, if you can slip them some of your music so that they know what your music's supposed to sound like or what the song is supposed to sound like, they can familiarize yourself. And it may even just be a little bit, but it's really all they need if there's a good sound man. So grease the sound man. Take care of that brother. He is your best friend when it comes to a show. Trust me on this one. <laughs> and the guys that don't, we always sounded better than every. We may not have played better, but we sounded better. <laughs> be prepared for anything. Any kind of change. Be resilient. Anything can happen. And I mean, anything can happen. And I can't tell you, I'll give you one example. We're playing this huge venue and one side of the PA goes out and the other side is ailing. Like it's at 30% capacity. There's no way to do this show. Not as a loud rock band. What do we do? We were resilient. We got out our acoustic instruments and we did a really good acoustic performance. And I've had that happen more than once. So all of a sudden, you're thrown off your game. Now what do we do? PA is gone. You know, when given, when given lemons, make lemonade, <laughs> right? And get everyone to enjoy it. And you'll find that that intimacy, I've had people years later going, you know, I've seen you a few times, Ken, but my favorite performance was that time that you, the PA went out. You had, you're forced to do an acoustic performance. It was so intimate and so personal and the way you handled it. And I just felt like I was in your living room enjoying you as a friend, sitting down having a beer or something, just listening to Ken Tamplin in my living room. Be okay with that, be resilient. It's really important. Saved me arse, straight up. Here's another really good one. I'm already into 20, but you guys hopefully this will, this will resonate with this. Treat everyone, and I mean everyone, with love and respect. I cannot tell you how many times I've seen this happen. In two different labels I was signed to, not one, two different labels I was signed to, I befriended the guy in, in shipping or the mail room, and the next thing I know, he's the president of a label at another label somewhere. Straight up. I could have gone, eh, you know, it's the mail guy. Now, I don't do that to, you know, to swooge up to that guy because I think he's going to become something someday. It's, it's an affair of the heart. It's how we are as people. We treat people with humanity and dignity and respect and love and kindness. And it will blow your mind how many times that will come back. Now, I've had other times where in the, in the film and TV business where a one music supervisor was being a jerk to me. So I was a jerk back like an idiot. And that person goes on to be a manager of like a bunch of film composers of which I was one. And every time a big film came up that he was responsible for to, to give out to different composers to do different parts of the film, I never got the gig because I didn't treat him with respect. Even if it was an unreasonable respect, I could have at least given him space and didn't have to, you know, didn't have to be a dick about it. And, and, and that's cost me. So this has saved me arse. Now it's funny. Um, 
one of these people, I was at the Dove Awards, and for those of you guys who don't know what a Dove Award is, it's kind of like a gospel Grammy, a Christian music Grammy, Dove Awards. I have three of them. Um, I've got 14 nominations, so I've, I was nominated every year I was involved in the Christian music business. Um, and one time I won a Dove Award, and I'm giving my acceptance speech, and I thank uh, one of the girls in the mailroom, you know, right? And I got in trouble for it from, from you know, the head guys on up. And, uh, and I said, I want to thank this one, and I want to thank this person, but I really want to thank so-and-so from the mailroom because she always returns my phone calls. And everybody laughed. I got a standing ovation for it at the Grand Old Opera House. Everybody started laughing, but the label didn't think it was so funny. But she went on to be a president of a label and signed me about seven years later. Straight up. Save me arse. Last couple bonus tips, guys. Here we go. Keep your publishing. If you guys are out there and someone's trying to talk you out of it or someone's going to sign it away for a film and TV deal, hold on to it. Don't give it away. You can, you can license it to other people. Hold on to your publishing. Copyright your material. Trademark your name. Copyright your material. I lost the name Shout to another band because I didn't trademark it and we should have done it in time and we didn't. So Shout doesn't exist over a trademark issue. For old, my old Shout friends out there, if ever wanted to know, it was because it was, that started the process of pulling that situation apart. So trademark your name if you can. Copyright your material. It's so easy. Go on to you know libraryofcongress.com. Click on Form PA. All you have to do is it says, what, what is this music? It just You put in quotes, words and music. That's it. That's all you got to do. Words and music. And then fill in the little things there. Are you a U.S. citizen? Is there anybody else involved in the writing of this? You know. And then it'll ask you for your description. All words, melody, and instrumentation. It's all you got to do. Put that in, in the Form PA. I think it's like 40 bucks now or 50 bucks to, for each song. Sometimes you can do multiple songs if you want on one form. Send in a copy of the music on CD or whatever your digital format. Now they let you um, send it in as a digital MP3 online. Send it in. That's worth the 50 bucks. I'm telling you, it's so worth the 50 bucks. I cannot tell you how many guys in big bands, big bands, guys, really big bands, that have tried to steal my stuff and I went... Ah, nutty, nutty, nutty. I've got this little thing over here called Form PA. It's called the copyright. Nice try, folks, but that's my song. And it's saved me arse more times than I care to count. All right. Have additional musicians in your back pocket to replace difficult musicians. Have additional musicians in your back pocket to replace difficult musicians. Whew. Cannot tell you how many times that saved me arse. Because, you know, disagreements happen. Egos happen. Pride happens. Just a matter of the way of doing things happen. And if it's your band or your situation, other people might see it a different way or whatever. It just happens. Have a stable of people that you work with. If someone doesn't work out, it doesn't have to be the proverbial <laughs> F you. It's like, well, you know, it's a bummer. I I'm sorry, I, I can't fly you over to Europe earlier so that you could be with your girlfriend in a different country and hope that you're going to find a way down to meet us in Frankfurt. It just doesn't work like that. It's we are a band. We go as a band. We come as a band. We leave as a band. We're not, not making all these special exceptions. for F you, man, then I just won't do the gig. Okay, well, I'm sorry to hear that. I have someone else I can bring on. You do? What do you mean? That's okay, don't worry. You go see your girlfriend. I'm cool with that. It's your, it's your decision. But, you know, or there's the, I want $1 million of, of medical insurance and I want da, 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 two weeks before the show. Whew. Wow, that's a tall order. Uh, I'm not doing that for anybody else. I don't mind trying to, you know, make sure that you're taken care of, but I've got to keep everybody taken care of in the same kind of way. I don't care who you got. I need this. Someone else, okay, well, I have another guitar player, you know, he's ready to go, I'm sorry, you know, you know, what do you mean? No, no, I, I mean, I didn't mean it, I mean, I, you meant it, and you're holding me hostage, and I get that, and I, and I, I'm not even mad at you for it, because people do what they do, but I've already got someone else that I, I think I'm going to go ahead and use for this show. Again, I, I, I am telling you true stories, by the way, these are many, many events like this that have happened in my life, so have musicians to replace difficult musicians. By the way, <laughs> there's something out there called Voice Live Touch. I guess they've got Voice Live Touch too. It's by TC Helicon. 
man, if I had that box back in the day, there's a lot of musicians that I would not have brought on the road because a lot of times, that's why it's so important to learn if you're instrumentalists out there to learn how to sing and play because more, more times than not, the instrumentalist that can sing will get the gig way before an instrumentalist that can't. Even if that instrumentalist is a little better, a lot of times they'll choose a guy that can sing if they, as long as they can you know, do the band, but they can sing, they can hold up the band. They're chosen way above ones that can't. But with TC Helicon Voice Live Touch 2, it's cool. You play into it, your guitar or piano or bass or whatever, and it reads the keys that you're in, and you can set harmonies for it, and you don't need that other guitar player that can sing. Just get a great player, and then TC Helicon, man, will, will save your arse. <laughs> save your arse. Anyway, uh, take an extra set of things like song lists, lyrics, batteries, a little extra money, things you don't know that you'll really need. An energy bar, put that in your access bag, you know, if you don't think you're going to need it, and then all of a sudden you're in sound check and everything's closed or this or that or it's too far away, you got your energy bar, right? Just practical things, pragmatic practical things that are really cool. You know, and by the way, remember that everything is trying to distract you. So make a punch list of what you know you need. Get, you know, I need this, I need directions, I need the phone number of the promoter, I need, you know, and, 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 and. Make your punch list, go through it, and make sure that you've checked all the boxes. They're all, it's all in your access bag, folks. You got your access bag, and you're ready to go. Because that, again, will save your arse. I, I remember times where I ended up in Germany, and somehow I misplaced the promoter's information, sitting at a train stop for hours, waiting for some guy to show up after a ridiculously long flight, because I didn't prepare and put it in one place. This is, re and, and it doesn't matter, guys, if it's for your church, again, karaoke, some, there is some element of this that applies to you. Pray and go, all right, God, you know what? I don't know what's going to happen in this event, but I know you're God and I'm not, thankfully. And so whatever the outcome of this event, this is really important. Be okay with it, even if it's a canceled gig. I love Sting, Sting um, said that one of the best uh, gigs that he ever played was one that he didn't play. And I guess it was in the red light district. And I want to say it was in Amsterdam or somewhere around there. And there were warming ups for some punk band, I forgot, way back in the day. And he saw, you know, some prostitutes walking up and down and he wrote Roxanne. Guess what? That was their big first big hit was Roxanne. And it was because of a canceled gig and him seeing these, as he called them, beautiful little birds walking that he could imagine himself being with and saving right, you know, that he wrote Roxanne, well, that song was the song that put them on the map from a canceled gig. Isn't that weird? So be okay with, like, everything has a reason, everything has a purpose. So even if things don't go as planned, there's always a golden nugget in there somewhere. So it may, and it may change the entire course of your life. It may even change it out of music. I'm not kidding. Like, it's, everything has a plan. It's, it's the universe. Well, for me, it's Jesus Christ, but whatever your thing is, um, but, but, but it, everything has a reason, everything is a plan, and there's a lesson in it somewhere, or a golden nugget in it somewhere, be good with that, you may not see it right away, uh, but just know that it was meant to be that way, and I'm going to close with this and take some questions, an ounce of prevention is worth a pound of cure, an ounce of, pre of prevention is worth a pound of cure, Remember that. Take that home with you. Remember uh, the plaque on an attorney's wall is, um, is help me is $300 an hour. Fix me is $1,000 an hour. <laughs> right? Think about that. So anyway, gang, take some questions here. And uh, thank you for being patient. Like I said, we have some technical issues. I'm going to be here um, till Saturday. So I'm going to have to do this again on Saturday in the same kind of way. But uh, let's go through some, uh, some of these questions here. We got... Uh, let's see. I already did my shout outs. Nico, what do you think? What do you think about the sun? I feel it's very energizing for singing. Yeah, uh, vitamin D is awesome. Absolutely. Sun is killer. Great. <laughs> Not killer. Uh, G spoon. What is a G spoon? Uh, <laughs> anyway, uh, Ken, you are uh, really a dope singer. Can you please explain the purpose of sticking out your tongue when you sing? I cannot seem to do it and it looks weird in a mirror. Yeah, and I've covered this a lot of time, guys. There's a whole video on Ken Tamplin's tongue on YouTube. So if you want to do that, the, the, the concept is, is that we want to have the tongue pull away from the back of the throat to create the most space that we can. People make fun of my tongue all, the, all they want. All I can say is the proof's in the singing, and I'm laughing all the way to the bank. Not literally, but could be literally, you know, figuratively, because I know what I'm doing with it. And what it is, is we first train it to be flat to the base of the jaw. Then if you're good at it, you'll 
train it to be concave to the base of the jaw. So it'll be kind of curved like this to the jaw. And then when you get really, really good at it, you'll be able to have it pull away from the back of your tongue, creating the maximum amount of space, having the uvula and the soft palate in the back of your throat rise as you ascend and descend scales or, or passages or songs and, you know, to, um, uh, yeah, songs. Um, anyway, and, and that space creates great vocal tract shaping, and you can use the tongue for things that are called glottal stops, um, ba, hung, ga, anything that constricts air from coming out of the mouth so that we can mitigate and referee even airflow coming out of the mouth and out of the nose so that it's a constant regulation of good airflow. And also, you know, the epiglottis plays a part in some of this too, in the trachea and whatnot. But anyway, okay, uh, meow dude. Meow dude. Meow dude. Uh, can I sing Cannibal Corpse songs without damaging my voice box? You can if you know how to do it correctly. Um, I'm going to at some point do an, another a thing on distortion and get a lot more explicit about it. But I cover that in my singing course because you must build a good, strong, clean, robust first. And I cover this exactly in my singing course. So that as you understand how to lean into a sound and start to develop distortion, you could do that safely and then again come back and clean up your voice so you don't hurt yourself. Beer Hounds Beer Reviews. Hey, Beer Hounds. Uh, I've been uh, really loving watching Sarah Loera videos lately. Uh, she's so amazing. Yes, Sarah is awesome. I love Sarah too. She's doing a great... In fact, Sarah, I'm going to be uh, hooking up with her on Monday of next week. We're going to be doing some more recording, so we'll have some more new videos coming out of her that's going to be really cool. Uh, Mr. Iron, can Mark Slaughter repair his singing voice? You know, I haven't heard him lately. I know he's struggling quite a bit. Um, he would need to go through a complete rehabilitation process. First, he should get strobed. Uh, they should look at whatever polyps and nodes, nodes or lesions that he's built on the cords, find out if he needs to have surgery. But let's remember, Steven Tyler, you know, Adele, all these different people that have really, really destroyed their voices have been able to have a complete recovery. I actually think that could be true for John Bon Jovi too if he's willing to take the time and do something about it. I am perplexed. In the 80s and 90s, there was a steam remover named Shout <laughs> and I thought it was a problem with the, with the same thing. I, no, it wasn't. Uh, that's not what happened. Um, my band Shout had nothing to do with the steam remover because you're allowed to have two trademarks so long as they are not in uh, competing for similar space in the marketplace. So we weren't removing stains unless they were the stains of sin. <laughs> so, um, no, but seriously, um, there was another band on the East Coast. Uh, they had um, already done a trademark to trademark the ability to, um, uh, to uh, play live shows but they'd never made an album. It's the weirdest thing. So they had a trademark to play live shows, but we had trademarked our name for our album, but we hadn't trademarked our name for live performance. So we were in this quandary, and the quandary was, bummer, we can make records legally and there's nothing they can do about it, but they can stop us from playing live shows. We can stop them from making a record, but can't stop them from playing live shows. And we finally went, we got to change this. So that's how Magdalene happened with my old guitar teacher, Lanny Cordella. Uh, Cordola, excuse me. November Rain, Ken, you are so talented. Any advice to avoid getting caught up with the plosive consonants? Hey, that's a good question. Yeah, uh huh. Um, so in, 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 in heavy consonants, I don't go, you know, hey, ba, ga, ga, you know, I'll throw like, hey, ba, ba. So instead of hard Bs, I'll sing it a V. You know, Instead of going, baby, 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 I'll go, baby, 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 and throwing little Vs, like Victor, Vs in there. And, and, and I'll have a bunch of these things that I do, and I show you all this in my singing course. But yes, there's all kinds of different extra, or different uh, little tricks that you can do um, to not have hard consonant sounds, and that's an example of that. Kyle, uh, Kyle Mate oh, hey, Kyle, how you doing, buddy? Uh, what exercise do you recommend as a good vocal cool downs after a gig or recording session, and how long should we do this for? You know, a lot of people swear by them. Some people swear at them. <laughs> and for me, if I've had a long day of singing, and I've done a lot of singing, I don't have to cool my voice down. I just exercised my brains out. I'm going to go relax. Now, for some people, and they feel comfortable doing this, and this is true in the athletic world as well, after they've done a lot of hard, arduous um, training, they have some stretching exercises that they cool down. Well, just doing simple, light, and bright, gentle exercises with through going through your vowels, even in sliders, is really, really nice. And try to bring the voice down in for a landing, real gentle into your chest voice. And don't overstress anything, just real gentle, five, ten minutes max. But for me, I don't even do that. I come back the next day and I warm up my voice and it's right back where I, where I left it in a good way. So you, we're just 
we're giving our body a rest, you know, and then we wake up, we give it 24 hours if, or whatever, a sleep, we give it a good sleep cycle, and then we come back and then we rejuvenate them by rewarming them up. So that would be my answer. Uh, Daryl um, Ken, I want to learn how to sing and have a band in, uh, and have a band in the future. Should I buy the best program you have first? Well, I only have one program, guys. It's called How to Sing Better Than Anyone Else. And you can get the pro packs with it. So there's the course, and then there's pro packs that are attached to it, which is like 30 hours of additional high-level pro training. So, and it's for a very few dollars more. So it's really up to you. I have a third option that includes three one-hour sessions with me. So a lot of people like to go... And the best way to do it, too, if you have the money, is to go, um, okay, I'm buying the course or the pro course. You know, it, It's called the gold bundle with sessions with me. And I just want to touch bases with Ken and make sure I'm doing it right just to you know, stay on track, right? stay the course. Well, um, that's not necessary. You can, but you don't have to do that. We also have a singing forum that's really great. It's free. Go in there and sign up, and then we have special forums for people doing the course and moderators in there to help you answer questions. So, so you can go in there for free. You don't feel like you have to spend, you know, bite off the whole elephant of a thousand bucks with sessions with me. You can get a two hundred fifty dollar course that will last you the rest of your life. So, anyway, gang, uh, that's what I got for today. I made up the extra time to you. Uh, this Saturday is going to be awesome. It's going to be. Uh, the, the lies and the myths, the seven lies, I think seven lies and myths that vocal coaches tell you just to get your money that aren't straight with you and will, will say anything to suck you in. We're going to have those uh, seven myths. We're going to talk about them on Saturday. I'll do some more Q&A. God bless all of you, gang. And until next time, peace out.